We are back at the Audioholic Smart House Boots on the Ground Sony 90L calibration with Jason Dustel. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audiohawks. Jason, we got you back from AV Pro Edge, the master ISF <laughs> calibrator. You're too kind. <laughs> you're too humble because you really know what you're doing. You are the you're the video godfather. Uh, all okay? right. <laughs> so look, I wanted to have you here for a while. Sony yeah. brought us the 90L, the 85 yeah. inch. $2,000 full array LED TV. It's a mm -hmm. mid-priced TV. It's a very attainable TV for most it's people. It's an extremely good value. You know, it's it's not priced up there with the upper end models, but when you see some of the results we got from the calibration, yeah. it's a really, really nice TV for the money. So look guys, I'm not a video expert like Jason is. I went in, set the TV up. I did it all by eye. I didn't use any test patterns. I didn't use any discs or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I balled it as best as I could. Yeah. I mean, what did you think about the settings that I had in general? They weren't bad. Um, there were a few things that were probably a little lower than they should have been, like the contrast control. I think you had it like 86. Uh -huh. uh, when, we, when we put that in the right position, I think it was like around 93 or 95. Uh, we gained a lot more dynamic range from doing that. And if you remember from the test patterns we were looking at, yeah. we weren't blowing out or we weren't losing any of those boxes that were in the test pattern. So the contrast came up quite a bit, gave us a lot more dynamic range. My brightness was a little too high. The brightness was a little hot, and I understand why, because this can be a very bright room at times. Yeah. The reference for a studio environment for light output on an, for SDRs, about 100 nits. That's been the standard for a million years. I've got you at about 300 nits right now. So considering you're in a living room, you're about three times as bright as you would be like in a studio, which is fine. And if you ever do have the windows open and all the lights are on, you yeah, have people over and like that, you have so much overhead, right? In fact, I think you said you measured 1,300 nits on this TV. Yeah, so for HDR, we are a little over 1,300 nits, which is awesome for HDR. Anything over 1,000 nits now is really kind of what we're aiming for. Some of the higher end TVs we're starting to see in the two and 3,000 nits, but there's not a lot of content up there, not mm -hmm. yet. But once you hit that 1,000 nit mark, that's where it really starts to get really fun. But you are 1,300 nits. Everything's done in custom mode, so you never have to switch modes, whether it's Dolby Vision HDR or SDR. It's all gonna be in custom mode all the time, so you don't ever have to mess with it. The only thing you might ever wanna do is if the lights are on and stuff, if the brightness, because we we did leave it at like 15 to get yeah, 300 nits. Yeah, pretty low, yeah. I think it goes to 50. Yeah. So if you wanna crank that up because you're watching something dark or the lights are on and whatnot, um, just remember where it was, so you put it back. Okay. So it's gonna be, at, I think we left it at 15. Yeah. If you crank it to 30 for something, just go back to 15. Otherwise, then you have the opposite problem. It's gonna to be too bright in the dark room. Look, and I know people are gonna ask me, what are the settings on this TV? Yeah, I know. It, and I know it. you're a little apprehensive about me sharing it because everybody's environment is different. We yeah. don't know how light or how dark your room is. Right, right. When Jason did this calibration, it was pretty dark, but it wasn't dark enough where you couldn't see your own hand. Correct, right? yeah. So it was, reasonably dark when right. he did the settings, which is about how we would normally watch the TV in a setting. It's not totally dark ever yeah. in this room. So what I will do is I'll share some basic settings that he did on the TV, but this does not mean you're gonna get the optimal picture in your set because every, every TV is a little bit different too, Every right? TV is a little different. Every room's definitely different. Everyone's seating position is definitely different. So, you know, are there some settings that probably will work across the board. Sure, mm -hmm. like sharpness. That's not really gonna change from TV to TV or from light light room to dark room, right? So certain settings will pretty much be global settings for any Sony at this point, at least in that same series or whatever. But as far as like the white balance settings and the and even things like the brightness and the contrast, that's totally room dependent. Yeah. And the white balance is dependent on many different things. So copying over like the white balance settings, I mean, if you wanna try it, try it. But my mentor, Joel Silver, says this all the time. He says, it's like taking someone else's heart medicine. <laughs> Will it work? Maybe. <laughs> but are or you it, might, it might work in, a, in another way that's beneficial, yeah. but we won't be talking about that in this video. <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> so, I mean, there's certain settings, sure, knock yourself out, but when you get to this level of detail, it's not, just not a good idea to copy settings. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll give you guys the basic calibration settings. We also did a video on what you should do when you take your Sony TV out of the box. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna link it down below, I'll put it in the cards. You guys should definitely start with that video first. Absolutely. To take off the bad settings that are come by default on the TV, so you can have a good clean slate, which is what you did here as exactly. well. 
Um, so why don't you talk just a little briefly about what is an ISF calibration or what is a professional calibration? What's involved, the kind yeah. of tools you use, the test patterns, that's kind of stuff. So the genesis of ISF was back in the day of CRTs. They were very expensive colorimeters, the light meter you see on the TV, and they were very primitive and very expensive. In those days, you were having to go in and do like mechanical things to the, to the chassis and to the tubes and whatnot. You were white balancing by turning potentiometers you know, and this was like a very, very, it, it, I always say it's like we were cavemen hitting the TV with a stick. That's like how we tubes, were calibrating back then. Like a tube day, right? Tube yeah, amplifier yeah. time. And, yeah. you know, you come to a time like now and um, the TVs respond so much better. The results are so much better. But you do need some tools, right? And you do need a, a methodology and you do need some knowledge of how the different technologies work. Like the way you handle an OLED versus this TV is a little bit different. A typical ISF calibration, somebody's going to look at some test patterns like we did before, and you're gonna eyeball certain settings based on the room environment where you sit. Mm -hmm. And then for the color correction, should be taking out a light meter, taking some measurements, checking your laptop, looking at the Calman screen or color space screen if you're a color space user. You know, it's almost like in an audio situation where you have a microphone set up and you're running tests and you don't like the results, so you make an adjustment, then you run the test again, and it's just back and forth and back and forth until you're happy. And this is exactly the same as it is with the TV. So a proper ISF calibration, your, uh, your main settings are gonna be done. Your white balance settings are gonna be done. Um, if the TV has color management and it needs to be adjusted, that will be adjusted. Getting the gamma right exactly how we want it to be needs to be adjusted. And some of this advanced stuff is why we have the laptops and the light meters and things like that. But when you mentioned before about what you should do fresh out of the box, that's gonna get you, that's gonna get most people more than halfway there. Yeah. And then it's just the nitpicky extra time that you need to squeeze out that extra percentage with, with your light meters and with your super geeky stuff. But I can't stress enough, the few things that we talked about before is gonna give you a so much better experience compared to, to factory. So at least do that stuff. Well, I could tell you, because I know uh, you went through the calibration mm -hmm. setting. It took you a good half hour or so of playing with the meters, maybe a little bit longer, actually. Yeah, it's it funny. You... The, the, sometimes in this world, it's, it's a little weird because by the time you profile the TV with the meter and you start getting everything like actually set up and you're doing some analysis and yeah, it might take you 30, 45 minutes to get rolling. And then you kind of figure out what's going on and what the TV's actually doing. Now it's time to fix it. 15, 20 minutes, double check a few things at the end, two hour ish ordeal. That's that's about it. Well, part of it is the Sony is really good, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it comes out of the box good on its own. It does. If, if you do the major settings we were talking about in the other video, if you do those and and fix your white balance and things like that, the Sony's dial in very easily and very nicely. And it's to be expected. I mean, they make the professional monitors, they mm -hmm. make a lot of the cameras that our movies are shot with, so they really get it. So it's always nice when I get a, a referral and it's like, oh, it's a Sony. I'm like, okay, cool. I can pretty much predict that it's gonna turn out great. I know where all the menu items are at. I know how this, the, uh, the sliders and all the different adjustments work. So they're just a really, they're a joy to work on. They turn out great, they're easy, they're nice TVs. So one thing that really impressed me is after he was done calibrating, I was a little apprehensive. I'm like, it's probably gonna be too dark. It's gonna be too dark. Cause that's, you hear about people when they get a calibration, they wanna crank the brightness up after. It was just like yep. an audio calibration, I wanna yep. crank the bass up, right? Yep. But when I sat here and I watched shows that I'm familiar with, like we're watching this streaming show called Resident Alien on Netflix, and that was SDR content. I don't even think that's HDR content. There was so much more detail. Like you could extract so much more out of the picture, the yep. black level, for once, I actually see really inky black levels. I always thought it was a little bit off with the way I had yeah. the thing set up. But then we throw on some SDR content. I know my daughter watches a lot of these Disney shows that are in SDR. And um, I was like, holy cow, it was tricking me. I thought it was an HDR. Well, it was funny because um, we had, this was a happy accident, but um, someone had paused that show before we started. Yeah. And there was a young lady with red hair and she kind of had a, had a rosy complexion. And I saw it immediately before we started, and I was like, ooh, too much. It's, like yeah. it's oversaturated, she doesn't look right. And because you paused it, and we came back after the calibration, it was still in that same frame, and immediately you were like, whoa, she looks so much more natural now. And I was like, yeah, that's one of the big perks of this, is you get the skin tones right. We are so used to seeing skin tones as humans. Yeah. If I walked in and you looked yellow to me, something's wrong. So when you can get the skin tones right, that makes a huge difference. I hope I don't look yellow. That means I'm jaundiced. <laughs> yeah, something's wrong, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something yeah, no, liver is gone. It turned out great, and I've got some really cool screenshots here that, that we'll show you guys. We'll show you the before results, we'll show you the after results, and this TV tuned great. Nice flat response, all the targets were hit. It's just a nice TV to work on. 
I, you know, I really enjoyed this whole process and it really gives me an appreciation for this Sony TV. If you yeah. guys are looking for an 85 inch TV that's readily available and generally affordable at like $2,000, sometimes it's on sale for even less, taking it to that next step, you have the potential here. This is a good TV to get someone in like Jason to do an ISF or a professional calibration it's worth going that extra mile if you're a video file. And Jason, I'm gonna share your contact info below. I'll put your Perfect. email address. Yeah, you get, great. Hope you don't get spammed too much. No, that's okay. That's but okay. Uh, th this guy knows what he's doing. And if you don't have someone, if you're not in the area, I'm sure you work with other people. Oh yeah, we, we, we're we all friends. Pro Edge, yeah. yeah, we're all friends. So if you, know, if you live in a different city or state or whatnot, then um, I can probably find you a good calibrator. I, they're all my buddies, you know. <laughs> Guys, it's you know, it's like I say this with audio. When you get the good equipment, you gotta have good room acoustics, you gotta have good setup, a professional calibration. The same thing applies with video as well. You get this great display, and if you just leave it in the factory settings, you're not seeing the full potential of it. But if you get someone that really knows video and can spend the time calibrating it, it really is worth it. I can't wait to re-watch some of the stuff we'd watch every night and just yeah. see the difference. It's you know? it's it's kind of like um it's kind of like when you get a new pair of speakers, and I know you know this. You go re-listen to your entire collection yeah. and it all sounds different, right? And it's the same thing. You're gonna watch movies that you've seen before, you're gonna watch shows that you're used to, and you'll start to pick out differences. Game of Thrones is the classic example. Watch an episode of Game of Thrones, see how the shadows are. You already noticed the skin tones were much better. Mm -hmm. Watch some nature documentaries, notice the color of the landscapes and the grass and the flowers, and you know, just take it all in. And at this point, man, you don't have to change modes, you don't have to, everything's tweaked. It's time to just enjoy it. That's awesome. Now, if I want to use like a game mode setting, what would I have to do at that point? Would I just go to game mode and copy it over to the custom you, picture? You or? could do that where you have to be careful on game mode. And I don't know on this TV in particular off the top of my head, but the whole point of game mode is to reduce as much latency, latency as possible. Yeah. And when you start going in and making adjustments, there's extra processing. So the latency is not as good. So there are some displays out there when you put it in game mode, you can't do anything to it. But if you can actually adjust game mode on this TV, yeah, you can take those settings that we made and put them in that other picture mode and everything should be okay. Just make sure the motion stuff is off and the energy state and you know, all the stuff that we talked about before. But yeah, if you're a gamer, throw it in game mode. If you can make the adjustments, knock yourself out, sure. Well, last but not least, when you guys do a professional calibration, do you give like a printout to the customer? Absolutely. Uh, that's that's part of it, right? Like if you take your car to the dyno, yeah. I better get paperwork, right? So the be the best thing I can do is we can evaluate the TV in its as found state. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's in vivid or who knows. And then we give a um, the whole report shows an after. So you have a before and an after, and then in the report is all your settings in case you know TV ever gets reset by mistake or something. All that stuff is documented. So yeah, we'll hook you up with all that stuff. So here's a note I'd like to tell TV manufacturers: Why don't you allow people to download their calibration settings on an yeah. SD card or? or yeah or USB thumb drive. That way, in case something like that happens, you could always recall it. Yeah, and you do have that with, there's like, there's certain video processors out there where there's so many adjustments and so many settings and lookup tables and all kinds of like stuff. Like a mad VR. Yeah, yeah, so on certain devices like that one, um, you can save a profile, you know, you can have it on your computer. If you're mad VR, you know, God forbid something happens to it, you load your calibration back onto it and it's done, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, the TV manufacturers, Good advice from Gene. <laughs> um, if we can make those settings to where they're able to be backed up, that would save a lot of headaches, I think. Well, Jason, I appreciate you dropping the knowledge for our audience. Sure. Anytime, guys. Especially coming here and helping me with yeah, this TV, man. You're, you're gonna turn me into a videoholic. I, it's it's easy, man. I mean, it, it's I, I say this all the time. I've said it a few times today. It's all energy, it's all waves. The audio frequencies and the video frequencies are just different frequencies of, of the same waves. So you start thinking about the noise floor and audio, well, we gotta make the room dark. You start talking about dynamic range and audio, well, guess what, it's the same thing in video. Mm -hmm. So our worlds are a lot closer related than most people think. In fact, I'm an audio guy, I just happen to do video. So we're all on the same page, it's all good. We just use light meters versus microphones. That's all uh, it is, I man. like it, I it's like all the, the same stuff. Love the analogies. <laughs> Guys, if you like this video, please hit the thumb up, hit the subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. And until next time, my friends, Keep listening.